it's a little bit wet out today because unlike my electric skateboard, which is deathly allergic to water, this thing can actually handle the water in rain and snow just fine. Try not to build up too much speed. Whoa, not too little speed that I fall off and die. All right, we got a green light to cross the road. Let's do this, not fall off and die. It's actually super stable on uh, the pavement. As long as I pick up a little bit of speed. Oh man, this thing is so cruisy. Oh yeah, that regen braking works treat. All right, so it's important that we track not only our distance, but also speed. So I'm gonna put on the app I have on here called GeoTracker. This will track our max speed and how far we travel today. Tricky to get going from a standstill. There we go. Oh. So I thought I was recording on my helmet cam this entire time, so a lot got missed. So let me sum up uh, what I've been doing here. I've been cruising around. When, when it's at speed, it's actually super stable. I mean, I wouldn't want to tilt too far to one side because I'll still fall off. I'm finding it is a lot harder on the leg muscles to balance than the skateboard because the skateboard has a natural stability to it. This doesn't. You are constantly making micro adjustments with your legs and that's really wearing me down uh, pretty quickly if I'm being honest. I don't think I'll be out here for the full 50 kilometer range test. Getting started from a standstill is super hard. So I think going forward, I'll have a stick or a trekking pole or something to kind of have as a third contact point and get me going if I don't have something like a tree or something to stand against. So I did check the max speed that this thing has gone so far. Just like I thought, it is just shy of 25 kilometers an hour. It's like 24.6 something, which is a good cruising speed. It's nice and stable, not going too fast, but not going slow enough where it's really unstable either. All right, here's a hill climb test. I don't know what the grade is, maybe 15% or so. It's got enough torque to get up it. All right, cruising. On a straightaway, as long as I don't screw around with my balance too much, uh, I don't really feel it stressing out my legs too much, as long as I maintain speed. It's only at the lower speeds, actually, that it really starts to screw with my legs. Oh yeah, now that we're all warmed up and at max speed, this is, uh, this is nice. for the bridge. Okay. Felt a little sketchy. Tilted a little too far forward. All right, time to torque up this hill. This one might give it some trouble. Oh, it's slowing down. Passing on your left. Really got to practice my dismounts. Yeah, this thing is a tank. It just cruises over everything. Even at speed, I'm finding it's still really sketchy at times, even on flat, open trail like this. It definitely takes more active management to uh, not fall over and get yourself seriously hurt compared to uh, an electric skateboard. If I were to make a comparison with the electric skateboard, the electric skateboard, you're more stable at slow speeds, and once you actually increase your speed, you get speed wobbles, that sort of thing. You have a higher chance of falling off. With this, it's actually the exact opposite. At slow speeds, man, you are really asking for it. But the faster you go, the more stable you get. I'm still getting used to how much tilt it takes to steer and all the minute muscle memory in my legs. So far, I think it's really promising. I'm definitely gonna be able to go on some journeys with this. Now this is a super tough hill. I don't know if it'll be able to handle this. I guess we'll see. 900 watts, full throttle. Slowing down a little bit. We're still going. It's got some torque. We're getting up here. Oh, we did it. We crested the hill. Nice. Say so we got down to about 15, 17 kilometers an hour there. 
Now we're going back up to full. All right. The left here is where things get a little sketchy. So I think this will be my turnaround point because from here on, I can either go that way or it's a little bit unknown. It's a little bit more twisty, turny, and that way is a bridge. And I don't feel comfortable riding this thing on that. And I really don't want to have to carry it over. So I'm just going to turn around and go back the other way. And as long as I take the occasional break, I might be able to burn through at least one battery. And then I can extrapolate based on the size of that battery, how much range I'm going to get. But let's do an updated top speed check. Yeah, it's still only 24.85 kilometers an hour is the top speed that it's registered. So yeah, the uh, uh, mount procedure that I've developed is essentially get it set up next to something solid that I can hold on to, up onto the board. And if I give myself a bit of a push to start, that gets me enough momentum where I'm actually stable and able to pick up some speed. So throttle, full throttle, push, away we go. on your left. Nice and cruisy. Not feeling any fatigue in the legs right now at all. Going back down that hill I powered up. Pick up some speed. We've done about seven kilometers so far. Another hill going down. This bridge was super sketchy the last time I went over it. Let's try not to die. All right, that was fairly easy. I think the key is to not change my acceleration level while I'm going over sketchy stuff like that. All right, so again, I'll show you my mount procedure. Lay it flat. Hold on to something stable. Both feet on. Accelerator. Max throttle. Push away from the object. Oh, undo the container. Yeah, this container isn't anything special. It's literally from Walmart. I think it cost me like five bucks. But the important thing is it's small. And I have limited deck space to keep my feet, so I really needed a small one. All right, well, I'm starting to get super hot and sweaty, and I didn't bring any water with me. So let's uh, head back to my apartment and uh, wrap this up. We're going to take the battery that I was running for the most part, plug it into my board, and check on the remote basically what the battery level is. Turn the board on. Turn the skateboard remote on. And it's saying it's got three out of five bars. So it was maybe half depleted. We'll say about seven kilometers used up about half of this. And this is a 324 watt hour battery. We'll say seven kilometers for every 150 watt hours. We're being a little bit conservative to make sure that uh, we're not overshooting it here. We get a conservative estimate of about 42 kilometers. So it'll probably be even further than that. And keep in mind that's without me removing the bar that's causing rub on the wheel. So I could probably get a uh, pretty much on par with the electric skateboard with the Dirt Surfer. So there we have it. The electric Dirt Surfer will basically do on par with the electric skateboard in terms of range using the exact same batteries, have a cruising speed of 20 kilometers an hour and a top speed of 25 kilometers an hour. Thanks for watching guys. And if you want to see all the crazy outdoors camping and backpacking adventures I get up to with all of my EVs, click the card.